Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the fighting staff today, all right? So uh, I like a staff or a short stick um, because you can kind of walk around with it. You can use it as, you can double as a walking stick and so you get less questions that way if you're walking around in what we would call a non-permissive environment, uh, meaning that, um, you know, maybe it's frowned upon to, to carry a weapon, something that actually looks like a weapon, okay? <clears throat> it also can double, like I said, double as a walking stick, so it can be, um, it can be beneficial to carry. So let's talk about some sizing first, all right? We're gonna go, uh, I have a couple examples on the wall here that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna bring out. Um, you know, what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn the camera so you guys can see that. Okay, so what we have first is uh, this. It's basically, if you could look at the height, I'm about, I'm 5'10", okay? So this is a six foot staff, all right? And I would say six feet is probably the limit. You know, you could go with your the height of your head or something close to that. That would be the, the tallest. Um, there are some uh, Chinese martial arts that use uh, a really long staff, like eight foot, 12 foot staffs. Um, that's, you know, cumbersome at that point. You wanna have something that, that uh, is, is big enough, right? But that doesn't, it doesn't um, uh, encumber you. Okay, so the, the, bigger the, the bigger the weapon is, the taller the weapon, the harder it is to maneuver and the more uh, ineffective it is if the person does get close to you. So while this uh, six foot staff is really cool, right? And it's very um, tall, right? So if I need to, I can really get, you see this direction, I can really get some good extension with like a thrust or something like that, right? And it also will block my whole, my whole body, right? So if I needed to, I could just put this staff right here and it blocks that whole side. Right, so it blocks the entire side of my body. So there are some benefits to having this, like the range. I can keep the, I can keep whoever might be attacking me or an animal or whatever. I can keep it at farther reach, right, for further distance away from me. Um, but then what happens is the person, if the person or um, animal or whatever gets close to us, this becomes a, a liability at that point because it's too big. Um, in order to be used at that close range, okay? So as beneficial as it is in one respect, when you get it in tight, you're gonna basically want to abandon it because it's too close, it's, it's a liability at that point, okay? So that's your six foot staff, okay? What I have here is two examples of a little bit shorter weapon, okay? Um, this one is about five feet, okay? So you can see how it comes up to my uh, to about my chin, okay? So this is a little bit easier to, to maneuver, right? You can use it a little bit closer, right? You can do, you can, you can use it in tighter quarters, stuff like that. So you can see already, just by hacking off 12 inches, um, it's, it's easier, right? It's easier to manage. Um, also, if somebody my height's using it as a walking stick, you can see you know, it's not as, it's not as, um, you know, noticeable as a, as a tall stick. Somebody might look at that tall stick that's taller than me and say, what, you know, why are you carrying that? You know, uh, with this, it's a little bit more, like it's a little bit more uh, understandable, right? It's not, not gonna raise as many eyebrows. And another example of that, just so you understand, this is just, this is just a broom handle, right? You can see the, you can see the tip right there, right? This is just a broom handle, so it's not like you have to go out and buy something special, okay? This is literally just a broom handle. Um, they're gonna come in different in different uh, uh, woods and, and whatnot, and this one, you know, would probably break pretty easily. It's not a good thing to train with, um, unless you're just training in the air, okay? So uh, if you start hitting things, like when I hit the heavy bag, I'm not gonna wanna do that too often with this because it, it may break, right? And then this type of wood, when it breaks, uh, if it were to break off, it's gonna create um, a sharp edge, right? Uh, so it's not as good to train with. And also, if you're hitting something and it breaks and that goes off now, it's a, a sharp projectile 
that can injure your, you or those around you. And that's, that's why in Filipino martial arts, we typically use a rattan stick or rattan weapon, which is what all these are made out of, okay? Um, so moving, moving down, you got the next step, which is four feet, right? This is a four foot staff. Um, and, I, and I really like this length, okay? So uh, for me, this is, this is kind of the best of both worlds, right? It's, it's really, I can, I'm strong enough that I could utilize it with, uh, with a single hand if I wanted to. I can use it as a, as a large baseball bat if I need to. So for my height, um, I think four feet is about, um, is about uh, the minimum, or the, sorry, the, the largest stick I would wanna carry, right? Um, and you know, you can do stuff to it. You can cut, um, you know, you can cut some handles into it with a Dremel or, or some other way, right? And you can put maybe a little rubberized nub on the bottom of it, like, like more like a walking stick, you know, just to kind of sell it a little bit more. But I think this height is kind of perfect for me, right? Where I can, I can walk around and I can use it, you know, just like, just like if you've ever gone hiking and you see those people you know, on the trails with the hiking sticks, right? So, you know, it's, it's easy uh, to pass off in that regard, right? So this is, this is kind of my favorite. Um, and then moving down from there, uh, this is a three foot, right? This is actually um, a Krabi Krabong trainer. And Krabi Krabong, two words, right? Krabi Krabong is the uh, Thai weapons art. And it's typically a double sword art. So they had these, these two three foot long swords with uh, really long handles, right? And then they essentially imagine doing Muay Thai with, you know, with these, with these two long swords, right? In, or one sword in each hand. So then you're teeping, you're kneeing, you're kicking, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, but this is, a, this is three feet and you can see, like I can use it let me back up a little bit. You can use it like this, almost like almost like a cane, right? Um, and so I got this from Combat Instruments Limited, Combat with a K, uh, Combat Instruments Limited, and it's called their Krabi Krabong stick. It comes in pairs. Um, this is another favorite of mine, right? Um, and so I like it because at my height I can still touch the floor with it, like a, like I would like a cane or a or a walking stick, right? I can still touch the floor with it so it doesn't raise as many eyebrows, but it's still long enough that if I choke up on it, I can still use it like a collie stick, right? Instead of using it like a two-handed weapon. So three feet for me is, is, a, is a good, is a good um, lower end, right? If, I'm, if I still want it to pass off like a walking stick, three feet's a good lower end, and I can still use a three-foot weapon right? Like a collie stick one-handed if I need to. I could, so this one's three and a half feet, right? Um, I could, I can still use that, right? Within reason, as long as it's not too heavy, okay? Um, and then this is the four foot one, okay? And you can see, right? I can still you, if I need to use it like like a single-handed weapon if I want, but getting much past, I'm I'm a stronger person, um, you know, 190 pounds, 195 pounds. Um, this weapon is is at the edge of of what I would use for a single arm, and I would only use it um, unilaterally for a short short amount of time. Okay, and so generally from here down, then I can start getting into using uh, these weapons. Um, both single and double-handed, right? So moving down from the Kribi Kravong stick, you have our basic 28 inch, um, 28 to 30 inch uh, collie stick, okay? So now with this, you can see if I'm standing, if I'm standing upright, like I would have to lean over to touch it to the floor. So now we're getting down, it's, you know, that, that extra six inches or so, that's the difference between these two sticks, okay? They, it makes all the difference. Like I can touch, so with that extra six inches, I can touch the floor like I'm using it as a cane, okay? Or a walking stick, right? I can touch the floor with it, whereas with this, I can't, okay? But just to show that you can use all these techniques, okay, with the short weapon as well, okay? And 
We're gonna cover different grips and whatnot, okay? But even with this shorter stick, you would still hold it, right? And give yourself, you know, three to six, or uh, four to six inches of, we call puño on each side, okay? So you don't wanna hold it like this, you wanna hold it like that, okay? So you're here, right? Boom, 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 okay? Okay, so those are the different uh, sizes that you can have, and these are, they're all relative to your height. I'm five foot 10, 195 pounds, okay? Um, so, and you know, out and about, like I'm most comfortable with the four feet and under. If I went up to the five foot, right? This would be, this would be okay too. Um, in like an apocalypse scenario where I don't have to worry about like, you know, being harassed by the police or whatever, you know, um, this is a good option. Um, and, and even, you know, even in nowadays, now at times like, you know, yeah, somebody might stop you and be like, what's, what's, you know, why are you carrying that stick? Um, it's also a deterrent, right? So if you remember that, that, you know, carrying one of these things, um, you might never have any trouble with anybody. So you might be thinking like, ah, you know, I don't, I guess I don't need to carry anything because I've never had any trouble, right? And that's, that's called complacency, right? So complacency, we, we, you know, you, you, nothing bad happens to you, right? So um, you're like, well, nothing bad's gonna happen to me. So probably one reason that nothing bad happens to you when you're carrying this is because a criminal or a predator is looking for prey. They're not looking for a fight, right? They're looking for an easy meal, okay? So when you are walking down the street and you have this, then a good predator is gonna make a different selection. They're gonna, they're gonna try to select their prey you know, so that they can get an easy meal. They don't want to select their prey, you know, where the person's got a five foot um, staff or stick that they can use to keep them at bay, right? And so um, that's what you want to kind of pay attention to, that you can carry one of these and never have a problem. You carry one of these and never have a problem, most likely it's not that, a that you're not a good prey item, it's that the predator's not looking for a fight. They're gonna go try to find somebody that doesn't have one of these and that's be easier for them to, to deal with at that point, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take um, this, I'm just gonna use the three foot uh, curvy Cravong stick and then we're gonna kind of go over some stuff. So I'll pan you back over here to, toward the bag. Okay, so let's talk about um, if you have a boxing or kickboxing, this is going to be really simple once I explain this to you. And, and a lot of you are going to go like, ah, man, how come I didn't think about that? How come I didn't think like that? Um, and, you know, if you stay in martial arts long enough, you're, you're going to have <laughs> a lot of those aha moments. Okay, so um, we take, take our basic fighting stance. Okay. And then what I want you to do is just grab, you're just gonna grab the weapon. You're gonna grab the weapon, um, giving yourself, depending on how long the weapon is compared to your body, but you generally, if you put your hands down like this, right? And if you notice that my fists are directly underneath my shoulders, they're not out here like this, and they're not inside of my shoulders like this, okay? We, we put them directly as my hands hang down. Both my palms, initially, this is one grip, facing me. Okay, so my palms are facing me, not alternating like this, and we'll cover this in a moment. Okay, so this grip right here is gonna allow us to, to start um, learning how to, uh, how to uh, um, adapt what we already know. So if you have, uh, if you're inside of our, of our striking program here, we have a, a bunch of different um, punching combinations, okay? So these are what we call our, uh, our numbered uh, series, our numbered combinations. So one, I'm just gonna put this down for one second, okay? One is a jab, right? So one is your jab, two, jab cross, three, jab cross hook, four, jab cross hook cross, and then five, jab cross hook, cross uppercut. So if we just take those first five, and that's what we call a builder drill. 
which means each combination builds on the last one, one through five. So one's a jab, two's a jab cross, three's a jab cross hook, four's jab cross hook cross, five's jab cross hook cross uppercut. So when we take our uh, staff, okay, and we hang it down and we have it directly underneath our shoulders, okay, and we just pick that up, then we have one, okay, one, we're hitting with the left side of the stick, okay, two, one, two, jab cross, okay, three, we go jab cross hook, okay, four, jab cross hook cross, all right, five, jab cross hook cross uppercut all right so let me demonstrate that <clears throat> so i have the weapon in my hand here all right and we just go through <clears throat> excuse me we just go through our basic um number combinations one through five okay so you can see i've got some exposed stick outside so i'm not holding it like this because i want to hit with that part okay so i give myself to my shoulders and I'm here, get in my fighting stance, okay? Jab, right? So there's my jab. Then two, jab, cross, okay? Three, jab, cross, and then hook, okay? Pulling this weapon back here, smashing across like that, driving like my hook, okay? Then four, jab, cross, hook, cross, okay? Five, jab, cross, hook, cross, uppercut, okay? So let's look at the back. So we go number one, here we'll step in, jab, okay? So number one, I jab, I'm stabbing the end of the weapon, okay? You see if I can, here, boom, and then cross, okay? So here, two, jab, cross, jab, cross, okay? Three, jab, cross, hook, okay? Three again, jab, cross, hook, all right? Four, jab, cross, hook, cross, okay? What you wanna pay attention to, these motions look, kind of look sometimes the same. So when I'm here, this is my jab, right? So if you look at it directly at the camera, this is my jab, jab, jab. My hook, hook. You can see the arc that the hook makes, okay? So jab, cross, and then hook. Boom, see how it's coming? And I'm looking, I'm finishing looking over my shoulder. So this is hitting like that, all right? And then same thing with our uppercut when we do our five. Jab, cross, hook, cross, uppercut, right? So we're hitting up underneath just like that, okay? So five, one, two, three, four, five, all right? So one, hush, two, hush, hush, three, hush, hush, four, hush, 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 five, Okay, so you can work those in shadow. That's pretty, it's pretty basic. If you know you're, you're one through 10, again, right? Cross, hook, cross. Seven, hook, cross, hook. Eight, rear uppercut, hook, cross. Okay, nine, lead uppercut, cross, hook. Okay, and then 10, cross, uppercut, cross. Okay, so when we do that 10 or that cross, we are striking straight out like that. So it's coming in, boom. So this part of the weapon is running straight in. It's not arcing and slashing across. So when I do an uppercut, there's that slash. I'm coming, boom. When I do a hook, it's hooking across and slashing. So if you look at it directly in the camera, this is slashing across the face, up, up and then when we hit uh, with our straight punch as you can see boom i'm hitting with this part directly into the face or my jab right all right
right? That's smashing straight in. So those are your straight punches. And then you go in, hit your one through 10. You can work it in shadow a little bit. So we can be moving around, right? And 10. <laughs> okay, so that's where I want you to start with this. Okay, just moving around, right? We can use our head movement. We can use knee blocks to block with. You can start blocking with these as well. Okay, so let's start playing with that a little bit and then we'll make some follow on videos. All right.